Townley's uh, designs uh, really were aimed at sort of all parameters of improving joint function. He not only wanted a pain-free joint, which he was able to achieve, uh, and there are a lot, a lot of people were able to do that, but to, to uh, achieve the pain-free, uh, low-friction, mobile joint with good function and uh, excellent retention of your own tissues, now that was his uh, real gift. And, and his designs all really achieved that when, when properly uh, applied. Th things that weren't going to happen without him, uh, resurfacing. He, that, uh, he made his mark uh, in a successful way. That, I don't think that was going to work out had it not been for him. And it now is a, internationally an important operation. He um, worked on other joints. Uh, he, it, it, there's little doubt that he did the first total shoulder resurfacing procedure, and that was done at, either in 1957 or 1958. I, and that was long before uh, that procedure really gained any traction, which really didn't really s hear much about other people in that field doing things of that sort with any kind of contemporary design until the 1970s. So he was way. Uh, ahead of the mark. He worked on pretty much every joint. Wouldn't surprise me if he saw 100,000 patients in his uh, career. I uh, were, have better numbers on the, the number of joint replacements that he did, and, and, and that's uh, you know, upward of uh, 12,800, uh, something like that. It's, it's a very large number. I, I have little doubt as far as a personal series, it's the, the largest that there is. It, it was such a long career in that field. He, he, and he was enormously busy for many of those years. He was an innovator, and so he had a, a number of very good ideas that, that turned out to be just what was needed at the right time. And probably he's best known for his work on the hip as far as the greatest number of lives touched, I suppose. He had a, a couple of different um, ideas primarily on the hip. The one that has sort of stayed with a lot of traction is uh, hip resurfacing. It's, it's popular today. He uh, really was the, the first one, certainly in the United States, to make much of that. He started in 1951 with a resurfacing hip design and he uh, pretty much without question did the second full hip uh, resurfacing, which means that you not only took care of the ball side of the joint, but the socket as well. There were a lot of people that were working on just dealing with the ball or the socket separately, but the full complement together, uh, certainly for resurfacing, really uh, was something that, that he pioneered and, and made work. Well, when I was training, a couple of his designs were in pretty common usage. And I, I started my training in 1979, and his implants, particularly the uh, Terra hip, were very popular and in vogue, and I was exposed to the implants uh, when I was training. That's really an ingenious design. It's something that's a big part of my practice today, hip resurfacing. And the, when most people think of hip surgery, they think of a, a hip replacement where you do a, basically an amputation of your natural ball, femoral head, and remove it from the body entirely and then put a stem down the femur and replace the, that ball completely instead of just putting a new surface on your existing bone because in most cases all that's really wrong with the hip is the cartilage is worn away. And Townley also had a, a stem supported design that was very popular and BioPro here uh, is, continues to make it and sell it and it was a favorable design. That, that design actually was the final publication of his career. He, he and I collaborated to publish a long-term study on, on that uh, design in 2004. A, a very favorable uh, hip to, to, for patients to have. Works well. He uh, had the wisdom to, to put a stem on the surface that went over the femur and, and that turned out to be uh, critical. He was the only one that had the vision to, to do that and keep doing it and, and refine that. The socket part of hip surgery is, is where most of the difficult challenges have, have been over time. And 
he uh, had a number of thoughts there. Uh, using a, a urethane-based polymer was uh, his first choice, and it's one that's being actively pursued today. His um, recognition that, um, that the polymer that was selected and most commonly used was not really the best one. And that took a long time for, the, for our field to, to get to. It's polyethylene is what I'm referring to. And we all thought uh, that was going to be really great. And, it, and we now find uh, that it's, we've modified it many times, but it hasn't been everything we hoped for. And his um, recognition that this whole field was not something that, where it had really been solved. And many people at various times have sort of suggest that it had. So his, his constant suggestion at meetings and, and when he was developing new implants, he says, you know, we can do better. And so that, um, that really matters. You could easily see a field like this, call it good, stagnate, say, you know, we've got that lick now, that this operation does work. And it does work well enough, you could see how it could sort of, you know, stop at some point where not for people like uh, Dr. Talley continuing to push it forward.